What's up, Sim Racers? Larry TJ or Sim here, and today we're going to be looking at the Oculus Rift S. Uh, we're going to also compare it with the Rift original Rift and the Samsung Odyssey over here on my left shoulder. So let's jump into it. Set aside, you know, 30 minutes of your time, but you know the end goal is to help you figure out what is better for you in your situation for sim racing. So let's get started. First up, you know. <laughs> Ah, uh, my shoulders knocked it off. I knocked this little little angel off on this side here, right? So, you know, getting started, you know, the things that you look for in sim racing, what you want to do, what you want to accomplish, is, you know, you want to get the clarity that you have in the 2D screen, uh, but with the uh, immersion factor of being in VR, right? That's what we're craving. It's, it's what we're striving for with the VR and stuff. And, I'm happy to say it is better for sure. It's not there yet. It's not the uh, you know um, two uh, I don't know, three K resolution like a 1440p screen uh, in VR, but is a lot closer than it used to be, uh, especially with like the Samsung Odyssey uh, and Odyssey Plus out, and this one here as well. So, uh, but going for you know comfort, clarity. That's really the two biggies is what you want for sim racers. Uh, tracking with controllers is null and void. You don't really care. However, I do like to get more for my money. And I want to be able to have a head unit, if possible, that I enjoy using for sim racing. And then still have the same head unit that I can use for tracking and stuff as well. So, you know, with this Samsung uh, uh, Rift S, rather, you know, what you get is you got inside-out tracking. That's a huge plus because I've already determined in the Samsung Odyssey that's the way to go but odyssey only has two sensors where this has five okay so and then uh you know you got great controllers uh the the windows mixed reality headsets have horrible controllers so if you want to do something other than than a simulation type game which are vr you're really going to have to buy you a rift or you're going to have to buy you a vive that has better controllers well even the vives are 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 not uh even the rift controllers are superior to the vive controllers from what i've heard and just looking at it not even having to use it i can tell you that it's it's a lot more comfortable to use the rift controllers uh, than it would be to use a vive controller but you know you comment below if you like them or not uh or not but uh you know if you want to do something other than just sim racing uh oculus is kind of the way to go right so uh but Let's concentrate just on sim racing here, and uh, let's talk about the comfort, and let's talk about the, the lack of screen door effect, uh, the uh, actual resolution that you're getting, and the, a couple bad points about the uh, the uh, Rift S here that I, that I want to point out. So let's let's knock out the bad ones first. Uh, now, if you see a black screen on the right of my controller, of my screen here, this video rather, uh, that's because my OBS is not optimized outright. It's just some error with OBS that I've encountered and I can't seem to get rid of yet, uh, where it black screens part of my screen. So I just put my images you're seeing right now on the top right to fulfill the real estate as much as possible. And in the center section where you see the, you know, the Oculus stuff going on, that'll get replaced with some gameplay during this video. So, and there'll be a little bit of black screen on the bottom as you see right now. So going forward, that's just kind of the layout is what I have to deal with right now. Okay, bad things. Uh, IPD adjustment, there is not one, right? There is an electronic one, but there's not a, a, um, a, a manual setting like you have on the regular original Rift. Uh, and then also speakers, speakers are, are atrocious. <laughs> so those are the two really bad things. Other than that, other than those two really important things, uh, it's freaking awesome. But let's dive into the IPD first. Now, if you are someone that uh, has over 65.5 millimeters distance between the center of your pupils, uh, I would suggest you go order something, order one of these off of Amazon or Best Buy. Try it out for a week. You don't like it. If it don't work for you, take it back, right? If you use Amazon, use my affiliate link below. Uh, really helps out the channel so I can buy gear like this to review for y'all guys and gals and uh, and, and yeah, grow the channel. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy this type of content and hit the bell notification. I try to upload weekly uh, on the weekends uh, for y'all sim racers out there. So, um, 
and thanks for tuning in. <laughs> uh, but yeah, IPD. So if you fall out of that sweet range of 65.5, the good news is is that it has a really big sweet spot on this thing. So uh, I have an IPD of 68.5, right? And uh, I measured it with an app that I got off of off of the uh, Android App Store called it is called PD Meter. And I will pull it up here for you. And hopefully this will come in and see it. But PD Meter, uh, that's the one I'm using. Worked good. I could have called my eye doctor and asked them as well, but uh, I didn't feel like calling them. Uh, plus I could use this particular app for my kids to set up the correct IPD for them as well uh, while using it. So, uh, you know, for th four bucks, it was it was worth the money. For me so anyway uh but if you follow that sweet spot there there's an article i'll try to remember to link it below uh of, of explains ipd and stuff and, and what's wrong with it and all that um but me being 68.5 actually i don't notice any problems with it now i do notice if my ipd setting in the software was was way down low uh it does look it's harder on my eyes rather uh so I adjusted it up to 69, I think, is what I have it at. Uh, but uh, it, and it seems fine. I'm able to play games just fine uh, with it. Now, I will notice as far as uh, messing with your IPD is that, not necessarily your IPD, but your vertical uh, setting, this headset doesn't tilt up. This, this, this uh, screen display, rather, doesn't tilt up. Instead, you're going to want to rotate the headset downwards on the back of your cranium here uh, and, and to get the screen up to where it's level with your, with your pupils. That's what I noticed I ended up having to do uh, for this to get the verticality right uh, for everything to be comfortable. And, you know, you can just look at verbiage on your screen in here to get everything where it lines up right and then just cinch down the back and then tighten up the front. You're good to go. Uh, so really good. Plus, when you have it adjusted already, it doesn't matter that this goes in over time. If you could just, this is set right. Uh, you just adjust it back out, slip it back on your head. It's in, it's in focus, you know. Uh, so that works good. But uh, the IPD is is actually better on, say, like the Quest uh, than this one because it's manual. So because um, it has a wider range, rather. But anyway, IPD is it is what it is. Like I said. Check them out. Uh, you know, who cares if, if Facebook has return units? Uh, you know, you, you know better. It's, it's the gamble you, you take by not being all-inclusive, right? So let's get on the next one, though. Another big one is the sound. The sound is atrocious. Uh, it is very tinny sounding. I get that they wanted a streamlined unit. Well, you know, that's what, a, that's what we say, right? I don't know what the hell they want it. I, I'm, I imagine since it went to Lenovo, it was a cost factor, right? You know, it costs money to put speakers on it. However, I would have paid 450 to have the same type of speakers I had on the Rift uh, for this head unit because everything else is so damn good. Uh, but you know, whatever. They're gonna they're gonna be opting out for new uh, headsets for us anyways. In fact, they already have. I'll go to the website here. If you go look under the Quest. There's already earbuds out here. They call them headphones, but they're not headphones. These are headphones. Those are earbuds. So it doesn't say what brand brand they are. I mean, are they AKJs, AKGs, or something like that? You know, something good quality. I don't know. But you know, they already have them for fifty bucks. So you can buy them now. Obviously, they work for the Rift S as well. But you know, it is what it is. Uh, oops. Go back and open that one up there. It, 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 you know, it's, it lacks, you know, you spend $400 on a unit, you expect it to have at least the same audio experience because they were touted for doing so well with their audio uh, on the Rift. You wouldn't have think they would have screwed this one up, right? But they did. Uh, geniuses, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, audio is subpar, but I, you know, I, I have to tell you, with the Rift, the audio was good. I liked it. I enjoyed it. Uh, but it wasn't ever loud enough for me. And uh, I I never changed out. You notice my speakers aren't on here. 
but I never changed them out when they didn't work. So what happens? Mine broke, and what happens is is this band when you're going in and out, in and out, in and out over time, it breaks the connection in the band and uh, messes up the speaker. Well, my right speaker went out, but my left one worked. Well, obviously it was very disorientating to have one speaker blasting uh, engine sounds and the other one not. Uh, but I liked having them because uh, at the time I was using Sennheisers and those were corded. And uh, so it was one less cord I had to have. Uh, however, nowadays, you know, you have, you know, like A50s, you know, all these wireless uh, uh, options. So, you know, I was using my A50s on these and we're great. And I got way better sound uh, than I did out of the original one. So going to the, say the Rift S, I can get that they didn't spend the money to keep the cost of the unit down. And then they're going to offer it as accessories, just like, you know, the, you know, Vive, Vive Pro, and, and, you know, everybody Nick picks you to death with all these little accessories that you have. But it does at least give you the option that you don't have to buy their accessories, and it keeps the base unit down. So that's kind of a plus in some regards. Now, as far as listening to, sorry about my kids hollering, but uh, as far as, you know, listening to say youtube videos or something like that it's fine works fine movies not immersive at all to listen to but you can hear everything clearly it's very tinny sounding so you hear verbiage uh come through just fine but you don't hear explosions and stuff or engine sounds rather uh as as well but as far as just the basics it covers the basics and uh but don't expect anything more than that so you are going to want to look for an alternative now they did give you a 3.5 millimeter jack right here that you can plug in uh some some earbuds of your own now, i'm sure you got you know dozens of them around uh laying around or a couple pair at least to plug in and, and slip in your ears and, and and go with that or you could do something like i've done too i got these upper fits i usually l listen to these just for the to listen to stuff at night when i sleep because they're comfortable in my ear and uh but they're just these and they're Bluetooth earbuds. So these are a good alternative to use as well. Uh, plus you don't have with a headphone, you don't have the strap to worry about going over your head. You just got earbuds you slip in your, in your, your ear. They're so hard to hold though. But anyway, they fit great in my ear. They're very comfortable. It's not hot. Uh, so I really like this as an alternative. And uh, if I had earbuds on here, uh, then yeah, I could have still used these, of course, but then I would still would have had a hot mess on top of my ear, right? So uh, it's a pretty cool alternative, I think, that you can use. And these were $35 uh, on Amazon. I'll leave the link below uh, for you if you want to try them out. However, I will warn you that uh, you may want to order a couple different pair of type of Bluetooth headsets because you may have some latency issues. I don't know how many programs you got really running, how many Bluetooth devices it seems like you have running through your PC. But uh, when I was grabbing downshifts and stuff, these were just about a you know a, a half a second to a quarter of a second off, uh, and it was just enough to uh, disengage me from. Man, what happened? You know, I just like. Oh, okay, something's off, you know, and then I was like, oh, shoot, okay, the sound's not quite keeping up with it. But as far as loudness goes, it was freaking awesome, you know, and as far as hearing the engine sound and all that, everything was fine. It was just the shifts were slightly off and the engine RPM was slightly not as perfect. Uh, so I, I would suggest trying out a few of them, uh, someone like Amazon or Best Buy or something like that. That uh, Well, I wouldn't buy any from Best Buy because they're way overpriced, but... Something like Amazon, buy a couple of them, test out a couple of them, send the ones back that you don't like, right? Uh, but yeah, use my affiliate link down below if you want to. Help support the channel and I can bring cool reviews like this to you. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification to keep up. So, good alternative there. So, I kind of get that, right? Uh, so, let's get on to the goody stuff, man. You know, there's a little bit of negative, not much. Uh, Let's cover comfort first, and we'll save the screens for last because uh, screens are a big one. But comfort, comfort is is a ten out of ten for me with this bad boy. Uh, it's extremely comfortable. Um, I like it a lot. So the the material that it's made out of is kind of that soft, uh, 
it's covered in, in something that feels like it's moisture wicking or something. I'm sure it's not, but it feels like it is. But I don't really get that hot in these. And uh, it's very light on my head because the fact that it sets on my forehead instead of this digging into my cheeks as much, it takes a lot of pressure off my cheeks. And um, so I really like that. And then you have the adjustment right here for your glasses. So if you wear glasses, you can push that button in and you'll see this part here slide out. I'll, I'll do it for you. Uh, slides in and out, right? Uh, and that's for your eye adjustment right there. In and out, in and out, in and out. Not you good. Anyway, so uh, that's pretty cool because you can set your headband exactly the way you want it on there. Put your glasses on and then, you know, slide this over it and then just slide this in to where it comes close to your face or you know if you did touch off on your glasses you'll feel it pushing your glasses and then pull it back a little bit uh but yeah really good uh setup so i like that i can use my glasses with these because so i i have um you know i'm a uh, uh nearsighted so i can see things you know my monitor is a little over an arm distance away i i see it better without my glasses than i do with it but far their distances in game i don't see quite as clear so i can put on my glasses and, and see it better uh, it, with that. But it makes you wonder if you see the close-up stuff less, but I, I didn't, I, obviously. I was able to see the close-up stuff just as good with my glasses on, plus further distances away. So a bump in clarity. Who would have known glasses work good for you, right? So, but uh, anyway, um, yeah, I, I do like that effect there. Uh, Comfort-wise, for glasses on, uh, it's a little bit cumbersome to put on the glasses because this, for my big noggin, uh, I will note that it, uh, well, I have this little strap here too. This little uh, uh, cable strap here just to keep it over to my right shoulder. But with my big noggin, without my glasses on, this is way too much space to use. But with my glasses on, I, I, I have to be a little bit careful putting it on to not mess up, not push my glasses down on my face. But, uh, but once I get past this little bit of crown right here, it's fine. Just something I noticed. Um, another thing with the head strap design, this thing adjusts out. Well, I have this little um, cable wrap on my right side because I want the cable, to, my PC's off to the right, so I want it to hang over on my right. Obviously, if your PC was to your left, you could just leave the default one right here with it hanging off to your left. But either way, this thing tends to go in pretty easy. And uh, so when you set this off to the side and you go pick it up again, you go throw it back on your head, you're gonna have to adjust this out, which to me is a pain in the ass. Uh, because this thing is so slick, the, the feeling of it, it needs like a little rubber piece on there. Maybe I'll just uh, <laughs> glue me on a little rubber, little rubber texture rubber thing on here to make it easy to grab. But you know, it's not much bigger than the band itself. Uh, see how you can see that there. Than the band itself, it barely sticks above it, so you don't have much to grab a hold of. Obviously, you can grab it this way, but it's not as easy as it is to grab out here. And um, being that it's slick, it's hard to adjust. So that's my only a little complaint about it. But uh, other than that, pretty good. Uh, but comfort, like I said, comfort is good. It fits really good on your forehead. Uh, I don't get really too hot in this, but if I did start sweating in, or when I do start sweating in it, because I, I have playing some shooter games, <clears throat> this this uh, material here that's used is uh, it's really soft on your face for one, but it doesn't seem to absorb the sweat as much as the as the Rift CV1 did. Uh, this Rift stuff, if you if you're Anywhere close to my age, you remember the Sony Walkmans <laughs> on my age. Uh, and they, you know, over the ear, ear muffs that they had, um, they had this, this same type of little soft cloth material. And if you were a jogger or something outside, uh, you would saturate that really quickly and it become uncomfortable. So uh, these become uncomfortable pretty quick in anything other than simulation games. Uh, so... Whereas this one is actually pretty good. So that's just one little thing about it. But I'm going to put this back over here. Well, you know, I'm going to set it on the ground. I'm done with that one. <laughs> uh, but other than that, yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. 
Now the nose piece, I don't notice the nose piece as being a big deal. It fits my big nose uh, just fine. It does let a little bit of light in, but when you're sim racing, really don't notice it. And I actually like that it lets in a lot. It allows you to look down to see if someone turned off the light or to just barely lift up your headset and look around for maybe a button on your button box, something like that. So uh, I kind of like that still. Uh, I'll look over to my keyboard sometimes to see what key I need to hit, you know, escape or enter or something like that. So I like that feature. So for sim racers, I don't think you'll mind it. Now let's compare it to the S here, right? So comfort wise on the, on the, uh, not the S, I'm sorry, the Samsung Odyssey to the Rift S. Comfort wise with the, let me see if I can put this up over my shoulder here, right? Um, the Odyssey does have, lo and behold, an IPD adjustment, which is great, uh, but it only has two outside sensors, and this one has five. The Rift S has five. What I've noticed for nighttime driving is that, uh, and this has to do with comfort too, right? Because you, uh, you know, if you're losing your track and it's uncomfortable to you, so uh, as far as your eyes go, uh, but I tend to lose tracking a lot quicker with the Odyssey than I do the Rift S with nighttime driving. Now the screen brightness, I would leave your screen up to at least 100% all the time when you're trying to game in low light levels to, uh, to get that lighting to your headset. But uh, uh, what happens with the Odyssey, and you've probably seen it in some of my videos, is, is when I move forward, you don't see it, but I've probably mentioned it. I know I've mentioned it to you. But when I move forward in my space, my whole screen goes forward uh until the tracking catches up to it and eventually i can move six degrees of freedom within my cockpit rather uh of the thing and usually i gotta like move this headset around with my hand and stuff and get it to retract and then finally it'll it'll snap back and i'll be outside of the car somewhere up here and uh i'll have to recenter my vr and i'm back in the car like you're supposed to be well I've been doing some nighttime gaming with the Rift S and hadn't had that problem at all. So I really like that. Uh, that that's not an issue actually. So um, yeah, you do have uh, also, you know, have sound adjustment uh, with this one as well, which doesn't matter because the speakers aren't that loud anyways. Uh, but it does have speakers. So, but I've been wanting to honestly remove these speakers uh, and use my other headphones, which you can remove them. Uh, but uh, they're just not loud enough for me, but they are efficient for sure. Uh, comfort comparing this one to the Rift S is this has all this pleather stuff in here and it's comfortable, I think, uh, to me, but not near as comfortable as whatever material they're using here, which is a little bit softer. Uh, it's just a softer like neoprene type material that seems to whisk away sweat where this one you 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 want to come by and wipe it off if you're doing something intensive to make yourself start sweating but uh comfort wise this is good but when you have it on your head this tends to bounce a lot and what i end up doing is using these little nose flaps which arguably are uncomfortable to use uh, that people's reported on for for a while and they tend to kind of get caught up here to the side and stuff and you tend to pull them back out into position uh, after a while so uh, but I end up using these to cup onto my nose to try to keep this thing from being out so much because when I tighten down this back of this headset uh, to my to my head my cheekbones tend to push this out a little bit but I want the screen closer to my face uh, because the alignment vertically gets off well, the sweet spot on the screen of this is so small that it doesn't take much of this verticality to get it out of your sweet spot of your eyesight where the rift s has such a larger sweet spot that uh it's not a problem so uh, this i tend to uh readjust this on my head a lot more but it was as good as it got at the time so you know i didn't really complain too much about it but it is something i noticed uh, that plus the inside out tracking wasn't as uh, superior as I would like to be. But now the Rift S is out, it's way better. Now, uh, comfort wise, nose piece is not that great on this one and it tends to get you out of the sweet spot. Uh, other than that, 
it's pretty dang comfortable. So, but the Rift S to me is still more comfortable to use. It's also lighter on my head, which I like. So the inside out tracking works a lot better, more precise. And uh, yeah, it's just more comfortable to have on my head. When I cinch this down on my face, it's not moving around, especially you can see I have a motion rig here. Well, you, if you see my channel, you know I have a motion rig. Uh, I have less uh, problems with wanting to recenter this on my face. I kind of pretty much, once I clamp it down, I just forget about it. And that's not another nagging issue that comes up to where I want to readjust or push the screen into my face a little bit more to, to get my verticality right, right? This one had perfect for IPD but the verticality was a problem. So there's like a trade-off, right? So this one has bad IPD, but the verticality is, is, is perfect. <laughs> so anyway, can't win for losing sometimes, I guess. But uh, <laughs> let's get onto the screens. That covers the comfort, my thoughts on the comfort and stuff. The screen, don't let the, you know, the resolution fool you. Let me pull up the resolution. The Rift S is 1280 by 1440. The regular Rift uh, is, 1080 by 1200 so a pretty big jump in resolution uh this is 80 hertz where the other one's 90 hertz get the hertz out of your mind uh yes it's 10 hertz less will you notice a difference i would beg to differ that you notice a difference between 80 and 90 hertz i can't and um it doesn't mean if i can't doesn't mean you can because you may be more sensitive to seeing the resolution but if you're you know one of those people that are more sensitive to it uh, you probably uh, are maybe pretty new to VR and you just haven't got your VR legs because uh, oftentimes in any VR game, you will drop below and go to asynchronous mode, which is 45 hertz. And if you haven't started ralphing at 45 hertz, then you've probably already got your VR felt queasy. You've probably already got your VR legs and, and are fine. Uh, but 80 hertz to 90 hertz, I really don't notice it. Well, I don't notice a difference at all. Not really. I don't notice a difference at all. And uh, so it's good. Uh, the thing I would take away between the screen, between this and the Odyssey, which oddly enough, the Odyssey is 1600 by 1440. So vertically 1600 by 1440 uh, horizontally is, is, is quite a big jump from this 1280 by 1440, right? Uh, the same, you know... Um, same uh, uh, horizontally, but uh, vertically is different. So a lot more pixels, right? But the difference is, is that that being OLED and this being LCD is that the this is RGB striped. So you you notice less uh, screen door effect, being that it's striped. Where this one's like going across and like an X pattern, right? So you notice it looks like little sideways squares, so it's like a screen door, uh, like on your window screen door. Uh, this being RGB uh, striped, you don't notice screen doors even less. Now this isn't the plus. Now the plus version in the regular OG Odyssey version is basically software. And, uh, but the plus version was arguably a little bit more uh, uncomfortable uh, head unit on some people than the regular one. So I didn't get the plus just because uh, watching other reviews of it, I, I didn't think it was worth the upgrade uh in my opinion since this was much more comfortable to use uh and i'm glad i waited because i did have a feeling that we've you know everybody knew we were having new headsets coming out so uh it wasn't that much of a hurry to do something different so uh especially with the same brand but three sub pixels make up one pixel on this one lcd screen so what happens is that um the image that you're getting has more saturation to it. So each pixel has more saturation. So the quality of the pixel is better than what the quality of one pixel is on the Odyssey. Uh, so what happens is that uh, I don't, well, for one, there is a screen door effect for the Rift S. Plain and simple, there is one. But it's so negligible that you have to kind of look for it to notice it. So, you know, it's really out of your mind. It, it doesn't, it, it's not like when you put on the rift, you're like, why is that so fuzzy looking? You know, it's, it's just hurt your eyes uh, when you game. And I've been using the rift here for, for over years, right? But uh, the last week or so, I've, I've been doing some testing on it just to get myself acquainted to how the rift was compared to the rift S. 
and uh, night and day difference between the two. But um, the Rift S between the Odyssey, you know, obviously it's a huge difference. Odyssey is a lot easier on my eyes. I can see things more clearly. Uh, the Rift S, rather, is the same experience I get out of the Odyssey as far as being clear and, and less fatiguing on my eyes because I can see colors. But even goes a step further because I'm getting more saturation with the colors in, in the bright scenes and stuff for sim racing that uh, it looks better to me. And so what you end up taking away is that with the Rift S, to me, you get the same visual qualities, but less hitting on your hardware. So you can run a, a 1080 Ti with the Rift S with higher settings than you would with the Odyssey. Now I haven't ran this with a 1080 Ti because right now I have a 2080 Ti, but Project Cars 2, I did just finish up some testing with the Odyssey and uh, I had it two times super sampling. I had everything maxed out on high, not everything, but mostly everything on high with a couple settings on medium, track info on low and grass on low. Uh, and then I had to uh, put the, uh, so the environmental map on medium and the reflections for like rain and stuff on medium and the uh, post FX stuff, I was putting on, uh, um, not full, but uh, uh, whatever the lowest setting is on it. But anyway, with the Rift S, going with the same settings, I was I was running a constant 80 FPS with it. I'm like, okay, let's just bump it up some more. Bumped everything up on high, put track detail on high, put grass on high, put full on the post FX stuff, and uh, still hitting 80 FPS in the rain, in a blizzard. It didn't matter. I was still hitting it. So uh, hardware-wise, this was superior, and I'm getting the same image quality as what I'm seeing out of the uh, out of the Odyssey. So why well, use the Odyssey, right? So I'm not. I'm using the Rift S now. Now, it will drop in FPS. What I notice, it doesn't hit 45. It hits 40, so it goes in half, right? So you'll notice 40 come up because uh, it asynchronous kicks in and goes in half um even when it hits the 40 fps i don't really notice it i mean you will occasionally when like that bathurst and the cars are, are way in front of you and it's mist and rain and stuff and the splash of the cars come up well it's already watery looking anyway so it makes it look a little bit more watery because of asynchronous mode but i didn't get the stutters uh, which was was really good because before with the Odyssey, I had to really change the settings a lot to, yes, asynchronous mode would come up, but I would get these stutters. And so if a car's coming beside me, it would shimmer past. Whereas uh, with the, I didn't have to compromise my settings with the Rift S. I could leave my settings the same. And yes, it went into asynchronous modes in those instances, but I didn't get shimmering or ghosting of cars around me. Where, like I said, the Odyssey I had to mess with the settings to uh, make it more fluid looking, which you know, if you're testing stuff, it's hard to set up the same scenario over and over and over, but uh, it just ran more fluidly. And that's because of the LCD screen. Uh, I got more color saturation and uh, didn't need as much hardware to, to, run, to run it, to look that good. So Rift S to me is a bigger bang for your buck than the Odyssey, especially if you were comparing the Odyssey at its original price of uh, $499 and this being $399. So $100 cheaper and it works just, it actually works better uh, because it less taxing on your hardware and it looked just as good in the screen. So <laughs> Rift S beats out the Odyssey in my opinion. Uh, now I, don't, I hadn't tried it the Odyssey S because in my opinion it wasn't worth doing it. Uh, but it's just a software thing. Um, you do see, um, you know, screen door effect, although they're very minimal in the Odyssey, uh, and then Odyssey Plus even less from what I've understand. But uh, on this one, it's it would have to be compared to the Odyssey S as far as screen door effect goes. It's still there, but not not as noticeable. I think it's less noticeable than the regular Odyssey just because of the uh, uh, the RGB striping instead of the I guess the pentile striping that is on that one. Intel setup on the other one. So uh, anyway, screen wise, <clears throat> I digress. It's a huge upgrade from the Rift and it is a, um, as far as the smoothness goes and uh, hardware uh, 
it takes less hardware to run this to look just as good as it does in Odyssey. Uh, plus, it's less money, new for new. Now you can get the Odyssey Plus now. I think for three fifty or three no two ninety nine. So if you're in the market and you only have three hundred bucks spend, mm, man, that's tough. So I would probably tell you to get the Odyssey uh, if you all you had was three hundred dollars to spend. You're going to be ve actually very happy with the Odyssey if sim racing is your only goal. But if you want to do uh, Robo Recall, or you want to do the exclusive VR games, or you have any inclination that you want to do the VR games besides just sim racing or a simulation type, then I would spend the extra hundred dollars and get the Rift S. That would be the difference. Uh, but if you're just solely sim racing and you want to get the best experience, no money mattering Rift S. But if money matters, uh, and you're on a real strict budget. $300 compared to 400 because that's what the pricing is of it now then then yeah get the Odyssey because you're gonna be very happy with it and check out my VR settings uh, for the Odyssey with 1080p to get the most out of each one of those sim racing games uh, but anyway that's it uh, that's all I have for this uh, the Rift S is actually a, a really good improvement and uh, I like it uh, oh you know what aesthetically let's check out the aesthetics real quick before I go before I, I leave you uh, aesthetic wise between this and the rift I think it looks pretty cool I like the Wally -E look of the screen uh, yes it's plasticky but you know so is the Odyssey the Odyssey is just a big goofball looking unit to me uh, it's very plasticky looking uh, only two sensors shiny with fingerprints all over it you know it is what it is uh, you know us that crave the high resolution we put up with aesthetics of the unit because we want the performance when it's on our head uh to me this looks a lot more uh well obviously you can see it's a lot smaller unit it is lighter on your head uh comfort wise is more comfortable out of the rift s compared to you know that's kind of another comparison too you know you got comfort wise but you have speakers out of odyssey and this one you don't <laughs> so, you know it, it's up to you right uh if you only had three hundred dollars to spend, yeah, get the Odyssey. But if you had four hundred dollars, I think this is a better experience. But uh, you are going to have to sub out. Keep in mind, you are going to have to get some decent earbuds to plug into it, or use your headphones over it. Uh, but uh, yeah, other than that, yeah, aesthetically wise, I think the Rift S looks better than the Odyssey, and uh, I don't think it looks bad compared to regular Rift. But it is what it is. Definitely more comfortable than regular Rift. All right, I'm done. That's all I got. I hope you enjoyed it. And it should have been some, uh, some uh, racing going on in the screen here as well uh, that I'm dubbing in. And uh, yeah, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, share it with everybody you know on Earth. Just go to uh, a share button to your Facebook and copy a million friends, okay? <laughs> now, anyway. We'll check you later. Uh, leave me some comments down below. Your thoughts on the Rift S, uh, maybe uh, your preferred settings. And I'll do some more videos, of course, obviously displaying the settings that I use in different games, uh, like all the popular ones like uh, uh, Project Cars 2, Automo, uh, not Automo Blist, uh, I'm sorry, Automo Blist 2, eventually, uh, later this year, which will be awesome. Uh, but also, uh, you know, uh, iRacing R Factor 2. Uh, ACC. ACC is horrible right now for uh, VR. Uh, so uh, with 1.0 is actually a little bit better, I think, uh, before 1.0 came out. But anyway, yeah, all those settings will be coming. So stay tuned for more. Hit the bell notification. See you on the track next time. I'm out.